for your safety. Big Pharma, Big Banks, Income Tax, The AT, The Illuminati Elite, Cultural Marxism, Critical Theory. You are nothing, you are nothing to me. Once again, Max, the globalists are nothing to us, but they do make us a bit angry. And perhaps that's okay if we're angry. In this episode of PMM, we're going to talk about what they've taken away from us in music, in sound, in harmony, in the vibration of the earth. We're going to talk a little bit about embracing our anger, and maybe that's okay. But we'll also cover focusing our anger and not be whiny, cryy little bitches. <laughs> Sounds good, mate. Why don't we just get right into the boosts? Let's do that. Johnny Hash, 100,000 sats. Oof. Big boost. Big, yeah, big man. boost. Thank you very much, Johnny Hash. Much appreciated. Node Runners, represented, warms my heart like my living room M50 on a hot summer's day. Oof. Fire emoji. My first fountain boost couldn't go anywhere other than the ungovernable misfits. You guys are the real deal. Please take my sats, but realize that not every Dutchman coughs up furballs like a cat. (laughs) (laughs) Just thought I would correct you on (laughs) the boys from the South speak softly, and some of your mentions this episode are among them. Soft G's and big D's. (laughs) <laughs> if you catch my drift. Ich hab die. <laughs> A big D. I had to ask Mr. Crown what this next reply was from, from Bucht. And it's a YouTube video, and it's a, a, a Dutch entertainer, rapper kind of guy. And he's talking about his soft G, that he, he's from the south and he moved to the north and all the girls were making fun of him because of his soft G. And he's like, you know, I got a soft G, but I got a big L. Which I guess L is is your ding dong. Oh. There you go. That's what they say. Taking an L in America to taking hey, an L in Holland uh, <laughs> very different. Thank you very much, Johnny Hash. By the way, the node runners are always represented on Ungovernable Misfits because Mr. Crown is a uh, is a strong member of the Node Runners and we have a lot of love for all of the Node Runners. Very much so. Can confirm. As a matter of fact, we uh, sponsored Node Runners FM last month. So if you went to Node Runners FM and opened up their player, you would have seen an Ungovernable Misfits logo giving our love and support to Node Runners FM radio. Are we sort of Node Runners ourselves? Not really, because we haven't, haven't got the hoodie, have we? I know, We're like I mascot. Keep meaning, I keep meaning to order stuff from Brinky. I'd have to imagine the Node Runners consider us Node Runners, although we haven't been knighted. Yeah, I'd hope that they would. We consider them ungovernable. So hopefully there's that mutual respect. And I think when we slip those hoodies on, we will really become proper node runners. Proper ungovernable node runners. Mm-hmm. Late stage hodl, 55,555 sats. Thank you, late stage hodl. Thank you, brother. Okay, this one is fine. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to release these. Next one is Finn Mac. Pop in my boosting cherry. Appreciate the podcast. You both are backbones. Cheers from down under. Thank you, mate. Uh, Dick Greaser. Also, not all modern art is shit. And uh, yeah, we, can, we came to that conclusion. Max helped me out. The Comply clothing line is beautiful, and I would consider that modern art. Also, Madex does a great job. Uh, so Dick Greaser and the Bitcoin Bugle have a comply clothing line. And, and one of the ones that I think is funniest is, is this Christian Ferry obey face of Michael Saylor. And it's a really big face and it says comply very big. And it's kind of That's menacing. <laughs> Another one from Dick Greaser is Urban Hacker, the next Howard Rourke. Another Fountainhead reference from Bonn. All I was thinking about was the Fountainhead when they were talking about architecture. And if you don't know about the Fountainhead, that is an Ayn Rand book about a, a rogue architect who doesn't really appreciate the fact that the architects around him are more cut and paste types. You know, they'll take, oh, Greek revival, and I mix it in with this, and I mix it in with that, and they have no real talent. 
and they don't consider the you know how the person will be using the space or the customer. I'm yet to read it. Uh, it's in my list, but I've not yet. Well, I hear there's a lot of people saying that it's very good. It's not as good as Atlas Shrugged, but it, oh, it's a good. Oh, I've read. heard the opposite. I I don't think it is. That's my opinion. Okay. Okay. Mm. Well, that's the only one that matters. Next one is from Chet. Hash slutet. Yo, LMFAO. That's a beautiful picture. Hash sluts. I just want to be in the mine, bro. Everyone wants to be a miner, but no one wants to be in the mine. LMFAO. Every home will be a mine and human a miner. I've gotten fat fuck comfortable too right now, Max. We enjoying life. John was supposed to be my drill instructor, but after a day, he never messaged me again. Lol. Y'all are fucking cracking me up. And yes, that is true. I did fail him. I messaged him one day. I said, hey, did you did you do some working out? But since then, I have messaged him quite a few times, even a, a video of my number three child lifting weights. And I said, well, she's out here lifting weights. You ought to be as well. Good. So get up off your asses, all you FFCs, and bust <laughs> out some push-ups. Next one is from Bert de Groot, and he says, fuck you. Thank you, oh, Bert. Was, uh, very sweet. Very nice of you. Fundamentals. Please read this boost in the voice of the subway fat fuck. Give me more. I want more. I want all that sauce and you really give me every bit of it. <laughs> You're not ripping me off. Next one is from user 85445985. And he also says, give me more. <laughs> That's right, expatriotic. That is fine. Thank you for the boost. Next we have Carl's Corner. Carl says, permaculture and Bitcoin are both antidotes to fiat. What is permaculture? A group of ethics and principles modeled after nature that provide an organizing framework to build capital for future generations. Earth care, people care, non-extraction are the ethics of permaculture. Permanent culture, permanent money. Together, permaculture and Bitcoin enable building capital for future generations, countering the ills of fiat. Don't sleep on Noster. By the way, it's a step on the path of succession. Peace and love. Peace and love to you, my friend Carl. Can't wait to spend time with you this August at Lake Satoshi. August 10th, be there. Next boost is Heartland Bitcoin. He just posted a picture of, of a crown. Oh, okay. Do you think that's for Mr. Crown or just Ye that we are all kings? We're all our kings, yeah. Especially Mr. Crown. Especially it's Mr. In the crown. Name. That's true. Eight Mithrandir. That's fine. So, um, okay, that's fine. <laughs> Thank you, Eight Mithrandir. Bubba, to all the body disrespecters, smoke them if you got them. Drink it to the bottom. Great show, boys. Kept me awake again in New Mexico. Damn, we got to stop the meeting like this. People will begin to talk. In the words of every rock star ever, rock and roll. And then a little cowboy, a cactus, a something and a something. Can you see what those things are? Oh, Screen's no. Not big enough. Forget about it. Uh-uh. I do have an appointment to get my eye check. Eyes checked. This will be my eye, first you know, eye check. Fucking cyclone. No, both of them. Yeah. Two for one. Okay. Rod Palmer. Real hey, can plebs. I, can I, can I Fisting emoji. For a second. Go on. Fisting emoji. <laughs> 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 I, I, um... The rock and roll, that's in all caps, and there's a long L. Okay. It wasn't very British of you. You know, we're the ones that rock and roll. You know, we got that from the Brits. You get everything from the Brits. Don't worry about it. All right. Sorry, Bubba. Rock and roll. Is that better? <laughs> yeah, I liked it. Good. Sats misfit. Morale maintained as I peel the aluminium heat sinks off the hashboards in my garage. Pleb strong. Bon, Max Rourke, little face painting and house. Yeah, thanks, Bon. Yeah, he's a house artist. Hmm. Time. This boost is for John. Keep up the good work, you fat fucking cunts. <laughs> okay, I will, and I will take that boost. And uh, it's not fat weights. fucking cunts, though, is it? It's fat fat cunts. Oh well, I put an American spin on it. Okay, Mister Mister, this boost is for John, as for Max. Oh, so he little competition and boosts. Oh, okay. Solex, great episode once again. Curtis is a great guy. 
Glad to have been talking to him and looking forward to seeing him IRR. What's that? I hope soon. In, in real life. Oh, okay. The acronym violation. I hope soon. Same with Max and John and Carl and Urban Hacker and TK and the whole bunch that I look forward to meeting them IRL. Not that they are nice, probably all assholes. <laughs> <laughs> Out of the blue and into the black. You pay for this but they don't give you twat. It's better to burn out because Rust Belt never sleeps. Samurai sight is gone, but not forgotten. Johnny Rotten. Rotten Johnny. You probably don't know that song. You don't know Neil Young stuff, do you? You wouldn't. I know the name Neil Young, but I don't mm. know. There you go. That was a nice bit of poetry from Solex. Well, yeah, he, he, he did it to, uh, to the... Out of the blue and into the black. Very nice. I hate Neil Young, as a matter of fact. Do you? Can't fucking stand him, yeah. A lot of hate in your heart, isn't there? Yeah. <laughs> you know who doesn't have hate? Johnny Hash, because he boosted us 500 sets. So it's Thanks, actually 100,500 sets total for Mr. Johnny Hash, Node Runner. What a legend. Keeping us going. Mm-hmm. Financially, mentally, spiritually. I feel it. Mm. Pies. Hey, chingity ching. Yo. When are two gonna get off Telegram and get onto Nosta, bruh? Question mark, exclamation mark, question mark, exclamation mark. I deleted Telegram a few months ago, exclamation mark. Or at least use Simplex. Ooh, not today, mate. From me, I'm on Simplex. I have been for ages. You can get me on Simplex, but at the moment, I'm not on Nosta, bruh. What about you, John? Uh, just uh, I, I have the Meshtadel account on Noster that I don't do anything with except uh, post up when we post an episode. Yep. I thought Solex would do some Noster stuff on the Meshtadel account, but uh, and he's got the keys. Post away, Solex. <laughs> I've made some Noster accounts in uh-huh. the past, and then I just get bored every time. So I don't know. The answer's probably no, mate. At some yeah, point, I did, I'll do I it, did but... message Pies on Noster from the Meshtadel account Probably when I read you, this. So no, he didn't. He's like, "Hey, yo, what's oh, okay." Up? He nostered you back. What do you call it? You noster each other. Mm-hmm. I don't like it. I don't either. I'm just wondering. He's zap. Oh, here's why I don't use noster. I, I, and everybody, please don't send me a bunch of stuff. Actually, you got to get done. Demis is no good because it's on iOS. What you needed to use is is this is not. Yeah, I know all. I know all the things. It's, it's not happening. I can't zap because Damus doesn't have this capability because of uh, some kind of lightning <sighs> thing or yeah, Apple Store yeah. or this or that. And yeah, I mean, here you go. This is why. There we are. That's, you see how dull that was? It's like, oh, I can't do anything. It's just not there yet. Mm-hmm. Me and John like things extremely simple. Like, so simple. None of this fucking around and things don't work and you've got to redo it and then change from this one to this one because this one can do this, but you can't zap from that. And there's got to be some middle thing that you do and that doesn't always work. This guy, it's the too- most OCD guy I've ever met in my life, liked things simple. <sighs> yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was the larpiest shit you ever said. I'm not I, I, I'm I am OCD, I'll tell you that. But I don't like fiddly shit. Yeah, that's, no, that's, okay. what, right. that's what Fair I'm enough. getting at. I don't like fiddly shit. By the way, what's up with your boy Q&A? Does he not appreciate sarcasm? Let him know I meant no harm from the comment I made about him going to the dark side on Pete the Cunt's podcast. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> he seemed a little butt hurt. Don't worry because he is a friend of yours too. He is still under my protection anytime he's in dirty jersey. Pie's got love for him still. Strong arm, pint, mushroom. <laughs> so, um, okay, that's fine. I just remembered that the blue collar Bitcoin guys have Heatbit as a sponsor. I would pay for a front row seat to a tag team, no rules, hardcore death match between you both and the blue collar guys. I'm putting my bets on you two. Don't let me down. Strong arm, strong arm, strong arm, strong arm, axe, little face, mm, some sort of like little truck, knife. Mm, there's something else that I can't see. Yeah, son, get those fuckers. Hey, ching, like... ding, ding. <laughs> Can I interrupt you for a second? I, I, he, Go on. he said, um, putting my bet on used to. Yeah. So you, you got to, you know, it's a little jersey in there. On used to. Okay, fine. Q&A, I don't think, I don't follow what has happened here, but uh, I don't think Q&A would give a single fuck knowing him. That would be my guess. 
but I don't know. I'll ask him, but I'm sure he doesn't give a fuck. And then blue collar. We don't want to fight with blue collar Bitcoin guys. We'd obviously win because fucking hard as nails, but sure. we don't want to fight them. They seem like good guys. I don't even know who they are. No, but I've never seen any bad shit. There's no bum bum checks. I don't follow it, but we don't want to fight them. But we would win. There's more, isn't there? I'm scrolling down. Yes, yeah, son. Hold on. Yes, yeah, son. Get those fuckers. I feel like y'all are my long lost brothers. Yo, this is full the streets, son. Drop. Stop, drop, mofos. Gun, 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 gun. 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%. Max, you lazy fuck. Thank God you got gangster ass America on, uh, American on this episode. Mad love to you both. Gun, American, uh, British flag, pint, mushroom, strong arm, rocket, moon. Love me some old school punk music. Let's fucking go. Thank you, Pies. I appreciate that. Oh, I always laugh at the way Max says garage and retarded. Laughing face. Well, I'm glad you like that, mate. <laughs> I have heard that people love the way you say rocket. Like it starts with a W. Rocket. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Pies. Hey, ching a ching the next one is from TYM Tim Time. He boosted 375 sats. MCOT, cheers. This typical cheers. Thank you, MCOT. Cheers to you, sir. And pleb to polymath. Always building. Hmm. Pleb to polymath. Did something with somebody else, but uh, I don't know. Probably don't want to talk about it. It was something very cool. I like to see. Ah, dang it. Sometimes there's so many things I want to talk about. Anyway, I like pleb to polymath. No, that's the end. That's the end of that. Thank you, everybody, for <laughs> for boosting the show. It is very much appreciated, and of course, as you all know, it rockets us, rocket, rocket, rockets us to the top of the charts and helps us pay for editing. It does. You know who else p- helps us pay for editing? Tell me. And it is our good friends at Bifrost Manufacturing. <laughs> That's right. Bifrost Manufacturing, bifrostmanufacturing.com. That's bifrostmanufacturing.com. You can also reach them on LinkedIn. <laughs> I keep hitting this LinkedIn thing, but I know okay. it, is, it, is, it is beneficial for a company like that. Like you go on their LinkedIn account, all kinds of people are, are re, re-linking it and interact. That's fine. Yeah, it is. It, it's very, <laughs> it's very that type of uh, environment. And that's fine environment but they appeal to all different kinds of organizations i like that they are into the aerospace industry i like that they will do stuff with plebs i like that they print these flaps for containment or that they let their employees um, build race cars in there do they they have a lot of fun they meet with all kinds of different people they do race cars Yes. Yeah. I didn't send you that video when when uh, Sats Misfits and I no. went ice fishing there I really didn't. I don't remember seeing race cars. One of the guys was on his day off and, and he came in with this bump and truck to do some work there. Nice. Point I'm trying to make is it's that kind of environment that breeds creativity. It is not a soul crushing corporate place to work. By far manufacturing, I'd love to work there. They can't afford me, but I'd love to work there. We'll do something fun. Figure something out. I'd love to work there. They probably can afford me. They just wouldn't want me, but I'd love to work there. I don't know. You have all kinds of different talents. Move to North Dakota. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's easy. I'll be there in the morning, mate. The missus would love it. She would. She's always talking about moving to North Dakota. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She said, you know what the Every problem morning. with it- When are we moving? <laughs> <laughs> you know what the problem with, with uh, the UK is? It's too warm. It's not cold enough. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go somewhere darker and colder, please. To the land of ice and snow (laughs) in Grand Forks, North Dakota, where Bifrost Manufacturing is located. You got a project, you have parts that you can't get manufactured elsewhere, or the manufacturing people that you've spoken to in China are sending you a bunch of shit, and you decide to yourself, you know what? I want American quality. Give me more. (laughs) (laughs) Give me more American quality. Like we used to make stuff here. 
Well, big fat guy at Subway, we are making stuff here again. And that is at Bifrost Manufacturing in Grand Forks, North Dakota, bifrostmanufacturing.com. Or as Max says it, Bifrost Manufacturing. Very well. Is that what you wanted? Bifrost (laughs) Bifrost Manufacturing? (laughs) I was really confused. I was like, what do you want from me here? Bifrostmanufacturing.com. Next up on PMM, we have Frequency. You see, you spell that with a P, P H. How creative. How creative to paint within the lines of PMM. Frequency modulation mode. We've got one boost that we missed, sir, and that is reserved just for you, Max Bit by Bit and Steen. Bass load 44,000. Never heard of them. 444 sats. Yes, speak louder. I can't hear. Base load, 77,777 sats. Oh, it's baller boost here. Mm-hmm. Very nice. Thank he you, mate. It. He really does. Now, please do the original. Ask and not deviate from the origin of this profound ask. Max, please speak in your native tongue every single element of the periodic table. No songs from John, just you. I would like a classical song in the background of your choice. And you will read, your listeners, all of the elements, in full to us, picturing me sipping tea and crimpets. What the fuck are crimpets? Sipping tea and... I think that's some sort of sex thing. (laughs) Sipping tea and crimpets while chuckling, listening to you get through this. Now that I have paid work, the end love base. Uh, no. He sounded like a fucking like drill sergeant or like a bit serial killery in that. Mm-hmm. So I will say, no, go fuck yourself, base. I love you, but go fuck yourself. I think it was the bit where he said, da, 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 and not deviate from the origin of this profound ask. Max, please speak in your native tongue every single element of the periodic table. No, so it's like it feels a little bit like you're trying to govern this ungovernable. So the answer is no, but I love you. Let's do something a bit different, John. Let's mix it up. We have read the periodic table of elements in the version of a song. We have. Because it was boosted by Bernie Manor in Sat's Misfit. But the origin of this idea is from Baseload. Baseload came up with this idea. Now, little does Baseload know, Max has the periodic table of elements memorized. I do. But not in the traditional sense. Max, being an artist, has memorized the periodic table of elements by their tone, by their frequency, by their vibration. And color. Mm -hmm. How how do you do that exactly, Max? I'm very special. I was born special. I always will be special. I do things differently. It's a gift you have. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty amazed I have many gifts and many curses. Mm -hmm. More curses than gifts, but this is one of the gifts. One of my Four gifts that I have is that I can memorize the periodic table in color and sound. Mm-hmm. Very useful. I'm sure it is. I, I, I've seen you do this trick before where, where you put your hand on a particular element. Like you can mm-hmm. lay out a silver coin in front of Max and he can hold it in his hand and the vibration of that element, he can tell you exactly what it is. Mm-hmm. I can feel it. I just know. Mm-hmm. Gold. I can feel it in my bones. Mercury. Mm-hmm. Aluminium. Aluminium. Absolutely. It's kind of upsetting because I, I wanted to get this skill that you have out there. Mm-hmm. And thank you to Baseload and Sats Misfit and Barn Miner for all the, the periodic table of elements thing. And I guess Joe Rogan should probably thank you too, because wouldn't you know, after we have our couple episodes with the periodic table of elements, they go ahead and steal the idea by having Terrence Howard on there. And he's this going on true. and on about this periodic table of elements, mm-hmm. this Walter Russell periodic table of elements. And I think, oh, we've got this idiot savant, no offense, <laughs> idiot savant here. Me or him. That can feel the vibration of certain elements. And so we didn't even get to reveal that to the world, but I guess since freaking joe rogan and terrence howard already ruined it for everybody loud, loud. we will demonstrate this okay how are we gonna do that all right here's what i'm gonna do max i'm gonna play the sound of an element mm-hmm. and i want you to go through your normal process when you're when you're discovering these things for the audience so they can get a little bit of a picture of what goes through your your genius mind okay it's a little bit of a different way to be honest i should still be fine but usually i'd 
put my hand over the element mm -hmm. and I would see a color and I would hear a sound. But now you want to play me a sound and I have to then, it's like reverse engineering it, but I, I'm gifted. I'm sure it would be fine. It's the best I can do. Okay, are you ready? And we're going to now play the sound of an element. Max, plug your ears for a second. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell the audience what the element is. The sound of cobalt. All right, Max, are you ready? I'm ready. You got it, Max? This is weird doing it this way, but um, it's warm. I can tell you that. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like it's in maybe the seventh octave. Okay, okay. Can you play one more time? No problem. It is the se Yeah, it is the seventh. Just stop it. That is Cobalt. Holy shit! Holy shit, yes! That is Cobalt. Nailed it. Hot dog. It is harder this way. All right, throw another one at me. All right, all right. This is getting good. Here we go. Name this element, Max. Uh, I might need to hear that one more time, to be honest with you. I very, think... Very well. I think it's slightly cooler. And I think we're in the fifth octave, but if I could just hear it one more time, that would be helpful. Ab absolutely. It, this isn't a trick. We're not trying to trick you. We're just trying to, to demonstrate your skills. Here we go. You can hear it as many times the as The thing is, like. I just don't want to fuck this up because I don't want bass load jumping all over me. Do you know what he's like? He's very mm -hmm. nickety, isn't he? Yeah. I want to get this persnickety. right for him. Mm -hmm. I love you, bass load. I want to get this right. Okay, let's go. <sighs> Very, very close to boron, mm. Mm. and it's not lithium because that's more of a purpley hue. Come on, you're so close. Uh, it's not nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine. No, no, you're, you're getting colder. I think that's beryllium. Whoa, woo! Is it hot dog? You got it. Yes, sir. It's beryllium. Yes, fantastic. Yes. All right, last one. I'm going to tell the audience, this is the sound of aluminium. Okay, Max, you ready? I'm ready. I know this one speaks to you. Okay, can you play the sound again, please, mate? Yes, of course, Max. Absolutely. Here we go. I can tell there's 13 electrons. Wow. Incredible. My feeling is there's three shells. Wow. And I'm not getting any color. I don't know why it's not working for me, but going on the fact that it is 13 electrons and three shells, that could only be aluminium. Holy shit. Nailed it. Unbelievable. Bravo, sir. Aluminium. Bravo, sir. Thank you. Wow. Wow. Now, listen. Thank you. Yeah. I don't think it's, it's quite tiring to do this. Mm -hmm. I want to get through the rest of the show. Sure. I don't want to go and have a nap or anything like that. But yeah, I'm glad we could get through that. And base, I, I hope that was uh, not what you wanted, but what you needed. Man, do you think you can teach this skill to other people? Uh, maybe. I don't know. Never say never. But mm -hmm. I, I do think it is a certain gift you're born with. It, it's really incredible. You know, I've known about this for a long time. I'm a little angry at uh, Joe Rogan and Terrence Howard for, for stealing, <laughs> stealing our ideas. Mm -hmm. As of, of course, we've had a plan to demonstrate this to everyone for a long time. But hey, everything happens for a reason. And now they all know mm -hmm. that you are able yes. to identify elements of the periodic table just through their vibration. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. The study of uh, vibration and frequency and sound and their effects is called chimatics. Do you know, have you ever seen these experiments done where somebody puts like a cornstarch on a light table, you know, like a, one of those tables with lights underneath, and then they mm -hmm. hit a tuning fork 
and they hit that tuning fork and the sand or the cornstarch starts to arrange itself in a certain pattern. Mm -hmm. And each one of these frequencies has a different shape. So quite often it'll be some shape shape that is similar to like a turtle shell. It'll look exactly like a turtle shell. 440 hertz, Mm -hmm. boom, goes to a turtle shell. Yeah. That's called chimatics. It's pretty amazing. There are these people that believe, and, and why not believe it, that there are certain healing frequencies out there. You know, you have these like solfeggio frequencies, like there's these nine electromagnetic tones that if you play, they have certain effects upon you. Reduce stress. Some tones can make you angry. Some tones have healing properties. Some tones get you more in tune with your, your chakra. They can enable you to become more in tune with the Earth's frequency. And there's this theory out there that in the early 1900s, you know, that like the Rockefellers standardized tuning and everything was standardized to 440 hertz. And that they took something away from humanity, you know, like the pleasant tones that monks would play on, on those like bowls, you know, or church bells or Gregorian chants, mm. that those all had healing effects on human beings. And no longer. And no longer, yeah. It was a 1953, I took a note here, 1953, they standardized the middle A at 440 hertz. And some say the, the Rockefellers are behind it, globalists. Probably. And that, and that for, tuning to 438 hertz is considered more natural. Or 432 hertz, which is known as Verdi's A. I wish I had something clever to say about this. I don't know. All I know is most of the weird shit that we've changed over time has made the world worse. So hmm. my gut tells me there might be something in this. There was a, I, I know you've heard this one before. I watched a YouTube video years ago and it was titled, Where Are All the Bells? I've not seen that one. And I think the thumbnail for it was like a, a picture of somebody melting down a bunch of bells. Now, I don't know if this was a World War II thing, like, oh, go around the churches and, and, and get all the, the bells or World War I thing. We need, we need more um, shell casings for to, to fight the Nazis or the Germans. Mm-hmm. But ever since then, we haven't had bells. And I used to like that. Even when I lived across the street from a, a large church in a place called Polish Hill in, in Pittsburgh, and the bells would wake you up in the morning. They were so loud. There was no avoiding it. So I don't know if there's an issue with too many people complaining for noise ordinances or bells. I doubt or, it, because we have them here still. Still? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, actually, one of my really close mates, his house is literally next to the bell of this church it's Mm -hmm. so fucking loud and so i think it's like every hour it goes off and it's actually really fucking annoying like it would wind me right up so it wouldn't wouldn't surprise me if people were like fuck this melt them down build Mm -hmm. a gun i'll shoot myself in the head (laughs) but whatever size gun you want with these bells yeah yeah so that wouldn't surprise me. But it also wouldn't be surprised if it was some Rockefeller like in weird shit where they're like, ooh, this is actually good. It actually heals people. They've done it for thousands of years. Let's fuck that up then. Mm-hmm. It would say like the 440 hertz induces aggression and emotional distress. So you, of course you want oh, the people okay. all riled up. That way they're more easily controlled. Of course you do. Yeah, that would make sense. It certainly seems like people are a bit more riled up these days. We'll talk about mental health in the Bitcoin space later on in the episode and, and how to channel our anger. Before we move on from this, Baseload, is, is a, he's a musician. I mean, he's like a real deal musician. He can play drums and then he can pick up a guitar and play guitar. And he's just one of these, these savants, like kind of how you are with, with uh, the frequency vibration of uh, a different elements. And he always says, if only we can tune ASICs in a way where they become musical, like you would tune like an orchestra, this section of fans, the the fans are going to move at this frequency and even the frequency within the cards. Perhaps we can do something with ASICs, whether on the audible frequencies or the frequencies that that the chips are clocking back and forth that create some kind of harmony. So perhaps through this distributed network of, of ASICs that we can bring back these solfeggio frequencies or this, this Schumann's resonance that is the natural harmony of the earth. That's really not. Maybe it's tuned back to 430 and that's what you have in all these little towns, little villages. There's pleb miners in there. They're mining. It's the heart of the home and it's also mm-hmm. giving off this frequency and you get rid of all that anger and replace it with love. That's what Bitcoin's all about, man. I love it, man. 
I absolutely love that. Totally do. You know, these different frequencies, they're associated with something. So I've downloaded a couple of these frequencies, three of them. This first one here is 639 hertz, and this is supposed to be pure positive love. So let's see if we can play this for the audience, see how we feel afterwards. Hmm. Hmm. Play it again? Sure. That's nice. I feel it. Hey, man. I love you. I love you too. This one is 852 hertz. It helps you let go of fear. Maybe. I've got a bit of anxiety listening to that, if I'm honest. Hmm. Hmm. Did you feel like you let go of fear? I did. I did feel like I let go of fear. Maybe I'm a, a, a hertz off on this. I felt like my chest got all tight there and I got all hmm. like a bit anxious. Try it again. Just see if it happens okay, again. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I don't like that. Okay. Very well. Maybe, maybe you're meant to be fearful. <laughs> you know what probably is? You probably never had fear to begin with. So what, what are you letting go of? Like a fearless lion. Yeah, that's you. So I see you. Yeah. <laughs> that's how I see you in my third eye. I don't want to hear about your third eye. It's different. Me. That's different. It okay. doesn't mean the same thing. Different. Different mm -hmm. third eye. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's a no. I see the world. Oh, I like that, actually. Yeah. Yeah. I genuinely felt like I had like tingles running backwards through my head there, like from my eyes backwards. Do it again. Oh, that's definitely doing something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you feeling the same? What do you feel? I that? absolutely feel the same thing. I, I, I think I can see the world in a, in a different way, perhaps on a different plane. I think if I just, I played this long enough, I could do some astral projection. That's really cool. Oh, bit off topic, but sure. you know that astral projection thing. Do you ever read that weird CIA released document about projection? And I can't remember what it was what it was called. Someone sent it to me a while ago. That's like a document that's available to the public now, mm -hmm. and then about remote viewing and all yeah. This stuff. And I was well, like, I think I watched a little snit tidbit uh, YouTube video on it, but I did not read the do the document. No. It was quite interesting. I didn't really understand it, but supposedly they can sort of go into someone else's head and vision and see what they're seeing. Oh, I don't think they want to go into your head. <laughs> Fucking certainly not. Certainly not. They've probably been there and thought, never again. Close that door, lock it away. Yeah, throw please, away. please close it. It's disturbing <laughs> me terribly. I like things like that, though. I like to think, oh, is this stuff real? Like, is it possible? Mm -hmm. I lean towards too. yes. I lean towards yes, these things are possible. But then because it's released documents, it makes me think, no. Because even released documents, I believe, are not actually the truth. Sure. They're actually there to throw us off because it's like, no, it's oh, like, oh yeah. you got us this time. We're going to be honest. Tell you the truth. Yeah, of course you are. I don't believe it. I've got one more tone that I want to play for you. Oh, okay. Are you ready? Listen mm -hmm. closely. You're not going to thought, it, Thomas. Aha! I tricked you! It's DMX. Oh. It's time to stop, drop, and boost. If you appreciate the fact that we have played these calming tones or one that opens up your third eye, <laughs> well, open up your phone, hit that boost button, and uh, send us a couple boosts. Maybe we'll play more tones for you. Open up more things. Perhaps there's a tone for wealth. I think the tone for wealth is DMX <laughs> Rough Riders Anthem. Mm -hmm. Certainly is. Other ways to support the show. You can buy gear directly from Ungovernable Misfits. It's summertime. It's getting hot. What do your t-shirts look like? Probably look like shit. And you want to wear them around the house or while you're doing chores or working outside. And then your wife says, hey, I want to go out with you tonight. I mm -hmm. want you to dress nice. And you're like, I'm not getting out of a button-up shirt. I'm not doing that. But hey, I could get on my Ungovernable Misfits shirt and look pretty damn slick in a t-shirt. Mm -hmm. I must say. Big skull on the back. Mm -hmm. Let everybody know you're a pleb miner. Exactly. We have a new design coming out as well. Ooh, tell me all about it. Can't say too much other than much more summery, more colorful, 
a little bit more fun and a little bit more around current events. And it is, I think, being printed as we speak to be released Fantastic. very soon. It's very cool. I'm going to order one myself. I can't wait to represent. I'll be going to Disrupt. Maybe I will uh, order that one and be rocking it at Disrupt. Yeah. It has a skull on it. I'll say that as well. Ooh, very cool. Very excited. Yeah. Yes. Now, besides buying clothing, you can go over to Ungovernable Misfits and view our art offerings by Mr. Crown and Max Bit by Bittenstein, who has three offerings of one of a kind fine art. Can confirm. If you are looking to buy any of the one of one art, please do reach out to me and I can let you know on the shipping. But it really isn't actually as bad as I thought it was going to be. So just ask. Next up on PMM. We have Pleb Mental Health. That's just a P and an M. Maybe somebody else can think of the third M. You know, Max? Pleb Mental Mindset. Ooh, very good. Should have asked you before we recorded. <laughs> Up next on Ungovernable Misfits PMM, we have Pleb Mental Mindset. And more often... Pleb's Mentally Malfunctioning. <laughs> Ain't that Pleb's true? Pleb's Mental Meltdowns. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I have witnessed Let's a couple... moaning myrtles. It's <laughs> rough <for> you. <laughs> That's it now from me. Oh, sorry. I'll let you. Speak. I'm so mad at you. I'm so fucking mad at you right now. You fucking piece of shit. <laughs> you really pissed me off. I mean, I started to talk, and then you interrupted me a couple times by saying some dumbass bullshit like plebs and mental myrtles. It doesn't even make sense. In my life, Max, and you know I'm not I'm not a young chap, so, I'm not an old man, mm. middle aged, a little past middle aged. I've done a lot of things in my life. I've never in my entire life experienced more emotionally delicate men than I have in the Bitcoin space. And I don't mean to be rude when when I say that. Sometimes when I I put the phone down or get off of Twitter or or stop interacting for the day, I'll look at Sarah and I'll tell her the stories about the way people reacted to certain things in space. And she's like, oh my God, Mm. I don't know how you do it. This is the thing. I don't know why you do it. And sometimes I think, I don't know why I do it either. Mm -hmm. It's not the majority. It it isn't, but it's so prevalent in the space that that it is troublesome to me. Have you noticed the same thing? Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, you probably notice I keep my circle small of people I actually interact with. And that you do, is just and I envy you for it. <laughs> it is just from years of seeing it. And, you know, like before getting involved in Bitcoin, I worked in quite a corporate world where mm-hmm. I had to deal with fucking HR and bullshit and whinging nurses and fucking just all the all the bitching and whining and gossip and and disciplinaries and fucking bullshit. And I hated it. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, ah, this Bitcoin thing, this is a bunch of rebels. This is a bunch of like ungovernable misfits who do what they want and they have this money that they can spend how they want and they like freedom and they're not little bitches. I like this. So I'm going to drop everything else I'm doing. I'm going to do this because this is cool. I like it. Unfortunately... That seems to be a very small percentage of the people who surround themselves, or we we are surrounded by, very dull. It's very annoying. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be dealing with that sort of shit. Yeah, I don't know what more to say than, than that, but I have certainly seen an uptick recently, and it needs to fuck off. Maybe like go over to Ethereum. If you're, if you're really sensitive, go over to Ethereum. Go and deal with those people. Go and mm-hmm. do some other... I don't know, do some AI on the blockchain and do something else. Don't fuck around with freedom money. It's not for you. What? (laughs) (laughs) So, um, okay, that's fine. It's not fine. Stop fucking whinging and being little bitches. It's very annoying. Don't want to deal with it. Is it a psyop? Is some frequency being pumped out on our phones from from Twitter, from these socials that we interact with, mm-hmm. that it's causing to everybody to be all up in arms and get so easily offended by everything. I don't know, but as I spoke to Diverter about this on the last episode with him, the last Confab one, we were talking about kind of how would you infiltrate mm-hmm. you were, yeah. the Bitcoin world and start to throw silly ideas or scraps to them where they'll fight over them and then ignore the stuff that actually matters. 
and it seems to be quite easy to do and it seems to be playing out and you can <laughs> sort of see patterns where it's like, ah, something actually really important is happening. And then there's like some fucking stupid bullshit that happens immediately afterwards. And everyone just like snuffles around that and ignores the things that really matter. And you can quite easily just push things off course by doing this. And it's very simple to like plant a few people mm -hmm. who are loud into the mix and people seem to find it more interesting and entertaining to either attack people or try and protect their little bubble of people than to actually care about what really matters. So, I mean, a, a perfect example of that, not that it's not quite funny, but the uh, the whole breed love thing at the moment is like, mm -hmm. you, I think it's you who said this, it was like, if you could just spend 1% of the energy that you're spending talking about fucking bum bum checks, and you focus that energy on what's happening with samurai, which actually matters, we'd be in a much better place. But it is definitely a, um, it feels kind of psyopy. That's what it feels like. It, it does. Yeah. And that's, uh, you know, our previous episode, that's why I wrote that piece of don't be a pig. Um, it's the, the similar mindset too, and similar behavior. What do pigs do? I mean, you throw some scraps in there and they'll almost tear each other apart to get them. Mm. Don't be a pig, be a pleb. Don't be a pig or a bitch. <laughs> Before we move on out of this, uh, Sarah had, has started a job a few months ago, and it's a lot of calling. And uh, so she'll call people you know, at their home and, and offer this, this service or product. And so many of them will say, if it's a man, they'll say, oh, I have to ask my wife. And this particular decision, I'm not going to tell you, give you mm -hmm. details of, of what it is, is definitely something that a man decides for the household. This isn't a sexist thing either. I mean, if you knew what it was, women that listen to the show, you know, warm orange tart, hash mm -hmm. body's wife, mm -hmm. and the statistics, babe, the four women that listen to the show, this isn't a sexist thing. This is definitely something that a man would make that decision on. Okay. And then the number of guys that say, I have to ask my wife, yeah, yeah. thank you so much for calling, but I'm going to have to talk to my wife about this. Yeah, you, but, but that's, I see that's the disgust classic, on her face. It's a classic weasel move to, to allow more time and not be put into a box. People used to do that when I'd sell cars. They'd be like, oh yeah, I really like the car. Yeah, so it ticks every box that I'm looking for. But, <laughs> and they'd like always like laugh, nervous, and go, oh, but I've got, got to speak to the boss. <laughs> the old ball and train. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, ha, 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 ha. You fucking cunt. You fucking weasel. Can't you make a decision by yourself, you bitch? Really used to annoy me. And then I'd slap them up. I'd tie them up and put them on the back of the car. <laughs> I'd pour diesel over it. I set it alight. Hey, hey. Oh, so, what? No, no, no. I didn't do that. I didn't do that. I didn't do that. My it's just what I thought of. It's what I thought of. Goodness, you need the upcoming Charles Muriel, Charles Francois Bienvenue Muriel article. I'll tell you what. I'm focusing your anger. I'll tell you what I need is let's go back to where is it? Can you play me 963, please? Mm hmm. Sure. Yeah, that's nice. I'm sorry. I let myself down there. I let my uh, my intrusive thoughts come through. I think for you, 963 is the equivalent of a squirt bottle to a cat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck this. Fuck all, fuck all these motherfuckers. Fuck all these bitches. Just fucking buy it. <laughs> okay. All right. Stop. <laughs> I'll just clear it up. I didn't burn anyone alive for not making a decision, but it is annoying. It is, it's very annoying. He saved him just in time. So my last message on this topic is all of you men, listen to the sound of my voice. Take a deep breath in. Breathe it out. Concentrate on these calm tones and frequencies. And stop being a little bitch. Hey, you know who's not a little bitch? Before before we find out who's not a little bitch, can I just make an observation on that? Yeah. I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. I think that now, because men are not generally in the same position that they were 20 years mm -hmm. ago, 30 sure. years ago, 40 years ago, most, certainly in England, most families are dual income. Most families, you have both working, 
both kind of roughly sharing responsibilities in the household. Mm -hmm. Less savings, less structure, less time. And so I think that that like masculine frame of being able to be in a comfortable position where you go, I'm comfortable in my thoughts and my decisions and actions, and I've had time to go through it and think about it. I have some savings I can make decisions not based on what we have to do, but what is best long term. Mm -hmm. And I'm guiding this family. I think that for the majority of people, it's I'm just holding on like that kitten poster. They're just holding mm -hmm. on. A, a gift one... we often send to each other. Yeah. And they're one bad decision, one misstep away from serious fucking problems. And so they don't then have that confidence and they don't necessarily want to be the one that makes a decision because you're only one decision away from annihilation. And so then if you're the one to make that decision, everything is your fault. And if you're a man and everything's your fault and you let the family down financially, nobody wants to fucking give a shit about you anymore. Like you'll be thrown on the dumpster, the family moves on. And so it is different. And I think a lot of it does come down to that. And I'm not saying that's right. You still need to man up and just, mm -hmm. you know, you still need to do what you have to do, even if it is harder. But I do think that's a lot of it. It comes down to like, oh, well, let, let's have a conversation about this so that we share the responsibility in case it goes wrong, because I'm too scared to be the one that makes the decision that's wrong. So I think some of it's that. To all of you <laughs> that were caused anxiety by Max's diatribe, Listen to the sound of my voice and this healing frequency. Breathe in and breathe out all the stress that Max bit by bit has just caused you. <laughs> Do you reckon that's stressful? You're not making it any better. Okay, all right. I don't reckon it's stressful. It's the way I live my life. It, uh, these people are beyond rehabilitation sometimes, I think. You can play all the frequencies you want, but if your first thought is, you know, have to ask for permission, or let me take some of this burden of making the decision off of myself because times are tough. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to cop out and ask a wife and put it on her shoulders. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying all the tones that... in the world are going to help you. No. Yeah, I'm no, I didn't get right. that impression that you thought it was right. But I, that is the feeling that I get. And I do think that a lot of people crave being in control and being mm -hmm. able to make mm -hmm. these decisions and like stand by them. But I just think it's fear. And also, like, you become like the people around you. And that is definitely true. I remember people saying that to me when I was younger. It's like the, the five yeah. people who are closest to you that surround yourself, you, you become them and they become you. It's oh, fucking sure. true. I, I, I tell my daughters that all the time. You you become what you consume. You know, they'll, yes. they'll play a song, which I find questionable on there. And they're like, oh, dad, everybody listens to this song. Said, Sweetheart, you become what you consume. Mm-hmm. It's true. And and so if you're surrounded, you know, the average guy, he's kind of like feeding himself soy and fucking whatever seed oil shit. Mm -hmm. And then he's like, doesn't get enough sleep. He's watching TV most way through the night and like just watching shitty soap opera shit because everyone else in the office is watching it. And they're not really doing anything physical. And Everyone else that they're surrounding themselves most of the time is like in that office culture, bitchy office culture. Mm -hmm. And there's just, you become like that. And I think that's, that's like the big difference. And so that's probably another tip is like, if you are a whiny little bitch, listen to these sounds that we're putting out. And then also like find people that you respect and go, yeah. fuck, I want to be like that. That person's awesome. Like I like, look at where their life is and then spend some more time around them. If they want to spend time around you, which they probably don't if you're a whining little bitch, so work on yourself. <laughs> you know who I'd like to spend more time around? Me. Ah, uh, our sponsor, Altair. Oh, yeah, who wouldn't? Altair, as a person, I do like spending time around and I like texting back and forth with him about all kinds of different stuff. That's a, it's a deep well, not just of Bitcoin mining knowledge, but Bitcoin knowledge and knowledge in general. He, he's, he's a neat guy and a hard worker and does all these little tiny things that I don't think any other Bitcoin mining gear shop does. All the innovations, the inventions that, that he makes and designs within the shop, the Erlacher, the Bit Chimney, and the T21 build. In the previous episode, I spoke about the T21 build. Why am I talking about it so much on our Meshadel show? Because 
it is, you know, we think mining is a sovereignty tool, especially if you're doing it right. Since mining is a sovereignty tool, our miners are also a sovereignty tool. And you want to be able to spend the least amount of money on a good miner as you possibly can. The difference between an S21 and a T21 price wise is about $600. You know, T21 comes in, in three different ratings. I think it's like 200, uh, let me just cheat here 200, 195, and 188. And they range in price from $3850. $3,850 to $4,200 for an Antminer S21. With the T21s, Altair is giving you a product that's 19 joules per terahash when the S21 is 17 and a half, and it hashes at 170 terahash, and he sells them for $3,239. He builds these things. He modifies them for you and then ships them off. What a guy. I think so. It's pretty, pretty masculine. He doesn't need to listen to these sounds, I don't think. No, I don't think so. The only thing that he needs to listen to is that's it. Then he's happy. He's buying a car from me. I'd say, what do you think? You're going to go ahead with the sale? And he'd go, either, yes, I decide to go ahead with the sale. Or, no, I don't want to. Not because of my wife or the dog or what the weather's doing. Because I don't like you. Or I don't like the car. Now fuck off. And he'd just walk away. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have any more time to spend with you. I've got other things to do, like building miners and building shit for Bitcoin. Bye-bye. If he only knew what a bullet he dodged as well. <laughs> well, he would know. That's the thing. He would know. Oh, yeah, I guess so. Next, we have up on PMM, Parenting, Mentorship, and Memory. This is a short one, and it stems from back in Pleb Minor Month days. We wanted to have a couple episodes where the kids are featured. Barn Miner and his daughter recorded an episode where they went over different aspects of mining and terminology and technical stuff, and she defined some things, and it was a really sweet conversation. My oldest and I had some, some interaction that we had planned out that we were going to record. Pled Miner Month got away from us. Part of that was girl number two interviewed Max bit by bit and asked him a bunch of cute questions, but that audio was freaking awful. It was really delayed. Neither of you could hear each other. I, I don't know why. But Max, she has been bugging me ever since to get another interview with you. Wow, I feel privileged. Well, I'd like she's to bring, I'd like when to she bring her in. What? Now? No, she's not going to interview now. I'd like to bring her in here so she can ask you for another interview. So I'm prepping you for this. Okay. All right. Hold on. I'm going to yell her name real loud. So I'm going to put it on mute. All right. I yelled her name, and she's coming in here right now. Hello, number two child. Hi. Okay, I'm going to give you the headset so you can ask Max your question that you want to ask him, all right? Hi, Max. I was wondering if we could do your interview again. I would love to do the interview again. Okay. It was my favorite interview I've done so far. When can we do it? I know you've got a busy schedule. Can you look at your diary and... You can let me know maybe later today. Okay. Okay. I don't want to keep you from all your busy stuff, but I'd love to do it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Can you do me a favor before you go? Yeah. Can you just look after your dad? He's a gentle soul. He needs a bit of a cuddle. Could you give him a hug? Uh-huh. Okay. All right. Thanks very much. Speak to You're you soon. Welcome. Bye. Well, she was very excited. Did you let her down easy? <laughs> <laughs> I said, oh, I'll see what I could do. I don't know. Don't know if I can be bothered. <laughs> I can't be bothered. <laughs> that was very uh, good, number two child. Yeah, she's bagged the interview, definitely. Oh, she oh, she got it. Put you on the schedule. 100%. Oh, man, I wasn't expecting that. One of the that. best interviews I've done. We got to know the real you. Mm -hmm. When you have kids, isn't it hard to get mad and angry at nope. a lot of the bullshit? No. Nope. Not that they do. Oh. That happens in the world. Oh, okay. I thought you meant at what they do. I, I oh, no, no, no. That's very easy to get mad at everything that they do. It's extremely annoying. Yeah. I, uh, I told you earlier, I got thrown up in the face three times last night. You sure? Yeah. That was annoying. I'll be honest. I was annoyed. But then at the same time, I was like, oh, but you're sick and bless you. You're all small and cute and sort of a bit like me, but much better in every way. And <laughs> I'm just going to give you a cuddle. But inside, you're, you're quite annoyed that you changed bedsheets three times and that you now stink of... I stank of c 
curdled milk and salmon. That's one mm-hmm. I love. It's really nice. I have a cologne in that flavor. <laughs> but you mean the outside Cats world. love it. <laughs> yes, I mean Get the outside world. all the world. pussy. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Of course I mean the outside world. There's no perspective for some of these people. Mm-hmm. They get all angry and, and flare up and upset about things. It's like, uh, yeah, I, I live with four women. Mm-hmm. I'm always doing something wrong. 24 hours within a day, I'm doing something wrong to somebody. Mm. Yeah. That's so I'm cool. absolutely numb to it. I think um, it's perspective as well. Mm-hmm. Like I've noticed, and this is no knock on, like some people haven't had kids or couldn't have kids or anything like that. Like there's, there's no knock on them. But some people that I work with and spend time with who are older and don't have kids and never mm-hmm. had children, like people who are in their late 40s, 50s, early 60s, and these men are like man children. Mm-hmm. Like sometimes, sometimes I go into work and I'm like, literally had like two hours sleep. I'm fucked. And like just had a, just done so much shit in the day and dealt with the kids and done all the stuff. And then I get there and they're like, Oh, I'm so tired. <laughs> I'm like, oh, really? What, what did you do yesterday? I'm oh, not much. I just I watched the whole series of this thing, some shit TV. I stayed up and had a few beers and that. I'm like, all right. I'm like, yeah, I'm knackered. Oh, I just want to stay in bed. You know what I mean? Just can't be asked. I'm like, okay. And like, nothing they say has any sort of like fucking. It's just like so boring and childlike and they have no responsibilities and no, like, what are you doing on the weekend? Yeah, I might go and ride my bike. And I'm just like, oh, just... <laughs> you know, I, I can't even explain it. I'm just like, you have no fucking idea how different life is. And the only thing, like, the only thing they have to do is look after themselves and they can't even do that. There is definitely a change once you have family and the things that would be a hardship or you would maybe whinge about are just so low on your priority mm-hmm. or, or your worries. Because you're like, you know, we talk about it. It's like sometimes some shit pops off on Twitter or one of the groups or something like that, and everyone's like, meh, 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 like fucking going mental about it and exchanging all these different like aggressions towards each other and just like going mad about something so like menial. And I look at it and I'm like, I literally couldn't care less. I've got yeah, to go and yeah. like, get my kid ready or like there's just shit that you do as a dad it's just like i don't don't, just couldn't care less so i I think yeah if everything in life revolves just around you oh yeah you're a different person to when nothing in life revolves around you the only time that revolves around me my little me time as you know is just shitting myself like (laughs) having the time to go to the toilet for five minutes, sometimes I really treat myself and I go, oh, I have a bit of me time. I'm going to be here for 10 minutes and shit myself. Ooh. Yeah. And, and you know, boy. spend a bit of time, like have a few thoughts. I might send a message back and forth to a few people, catch up with some things. But other than that's my time. And then there's no other time. Everything else is for everyone else. And so that's the difference. It, it changes you. I'm looking at our next ad read and, and I want to do an extra one for, for Lake Satoshi because it's coming up close. Okay. And as everyone heard on the previous episode, the previous week, which we have yet to pick the winner of two tickets to Lake Satoshi given to us by Bubba. If you, whoever got closest to how many miles he and his wife have driven, their team drivers, that week, you will be given two tickets to Lake Satoshi. But I'm thinking about Bubba, like Bubba doesn't have kids. And I know in my interactions with him before, I'll say something about kids and I'll say, oh, you know, I I never had kids. But he never ended up being one of these people that are all soft in life and weren't hardened by having kids or or dealing with those hardships. That I'd like to ask, you know, his advice for what people who don't have kids Mm. are supposed to do to maintain their masculinity or maintain their their focus and don't become, oh, my my boy, I'm going to catch you guys (laughs) on the telly. (laughs) <laughs> no, nobody wants to be that that person. But Bubba isn't that person. He's a very neat guy. He you know, moves to the Philippines and moves back in the desert, tinkers with the, his his dune buggy and stuff. Like he's he's a, a a very neat guy. So not having kids didn't seem to negatively affect him. And I almost think like Bubba's going to say, "Well, you know, I was a partying rock star until I was you know in my forties. Mm-hmm. So I, I think that that keeps you masculine in in a way. Yeah, seen the seen the world, seen things. Yeah, and some of it just comes from who you spend time around or it's just like internal. Not everyone becomes mm-hmm. like that. Just, um, yeah. 
You got it or you don't. Or having any adverse, like adversary in your life, like having kids is very hard. It's very, very hard to deal with. But there's other things that are very, very hard to deal with. And if you get mm-hmm. through those sure. and you and you manage them and you make the best out of those situations, then that can do the same thing. But it's like if life's just on easy mode all the time and the hardest thing that you have to deal with is like your favorite TV show just got canceled and you're going to go <laughs> on Reddit and write a rant story about it or some complete nim you've never met and never will on Twitter doesn't like an idea that you've said that you're going to fucking cry about it. Like if that's the hardest thing you've dealt with, then that's the hardest thing you've dealt with and you're going to find that really hard. If you've been to war or you've had kids or you've gone through a, a really, really tough time in life in whatever way and you get out the other side, then you've grown. You're going to be tougher. I don't have anything to say. <laughs> I'm just ranting. I like your rants. Yeah. yeah. I don't have anything that to say. That work really fucking annoys me. Every yeah, day. it sure sounds like it. <laughs> yeah, I come, back, I come back every day. It's like a man child. I come back every and day. For some people, there's nothing you can do. Even people that have been through hardships and troubles and strife and put so much, you know, work into this world, they still, some people are just still touched and fucked up and there's no amount of anything that you can do for them. Yeah. And just be careful not to get sucked into their black hole. I'm in a glass case of emotion. Well, back to Bubba and back to Lake Satoshi. Bubba is a team driver and he travels all over the United States and he has been nice enough to give away some tickets to the Lake Satoshi event. Our last episode of Ungovernable Misfits Action News, episode five. We instructed everyone to take a guess as to how many miles Bubba and his lady have driven on the wide open roads of the American West. And depending on how close you got, you will be given two free tickets to the Lake Satoshi event. Lake Satoshi Ben, I'm just going to say this even though he hasn't verified it for me, will give you a discount on some Lake Satoshi gear to whoever gets second place. So we're just going to extend that over to week number two. We are once again giving away two tickets to the Lake Satoshi event to the first place winner who guesses the mileage that Bubba and his lady are driving. And we will be giving a slight discount for some Lake Satoshi clothing on the Lake Satoshi store to the second place winner. What's your guess this time? Uh, 2,100 miles. Very well then. Noted. Zach Bubba, Bubba is going to keep accurate records. I think it would upset him if he got something wrong in, the, in his mileage. 2,100, Bubba. If you're approaching that, pull over. <laughs> right now, just don't deliver the load. Don't even bother, Bubba. Yeah, go and revert. That's how it works, isn't it? If you go, if you drive backwards, it mm-hmm. unclocks the miles. It's like Ferris Bueller's day off. Mm-hmm. So don't have me down, mate. 2,100. Noted. If you don't win this, so what? Still get your ass over to Lake Satoshi August 10th for the... It's a non-PodConf approved gathering. I can tell you that. I bet PodConf hates Lake Satoshi. It's a threat to their business model. It certainly is. The anti-PodConf get-together Lake Satoshi. Fucking PodConf. Take their money though, right? Oh, yeah. And to close this episode of PMM, as always, we have our staff writer, Charles Francois. Bienvenue, Muriel with another piece called Channeling Anger, Live by Truth. This is a long one. I'm only going to give it a teaser. If you want to listen to the entire piece, just wait a couple days. We'll drop it. Or That's fine. you can go to, thank you very much, Peter. You can go to ungovernablemisfits.com under writings, Misfit Rants, and you will find all of Charles Francois Bienvenue Miliel's articles. And if you'd like to, read them in order because they all relate to each other. He has put a lot of thought into these articles. This one starts, The Soviet Union was beginning to unravel when Alexander Shultzenitsyn wrote his 1974 essay, Live Not by Lies. In 2024, as I write this, there is a new totalitarian consciousness sweeping through the ruling class of the Western world, which once stood as the bastion of freedom against the Soviet mind virus. While Shultzenitsyn was attempting to embolden individuals who lived their entire lives in a real-life Orwellian nightmare, today I am trying to embolden individuals who are living in what is developing as a horrific Orwellian nightmare. It is not too late to stop what is happening, but the only way to be successful is to defy their authority and tell them the truth. Rock bottom is when you decide to stop digging. 
The entire premise of the totalitarian ruling class appearance of legitimacy is building a society on lies. That is why they need to control the academia, media, and even the clergy. In 2020, there was a reason the churches were closed. Any dissident opinions or communities posed a grave threat to the plans of the controllers. The Soviet Union enforced their totalitarian actions through violent and strict policies against their dissenters. In Western democracies, the elimination of dissident voices is more subtle, yet highly effective. Individuals are deplatformed, debanked, debunked, and then quietly de-lifed. There is a common saying many mothers ask their kids, which is, if everyone else was jumping off a bridge, would you do it too? Another variation often used is, if someone told you to jump off a bridge, would you do it? One focuses on peer pressures, and the other on authority figures. In both scenarios, the mother is trying to prompt the child to critically think about their situation. This is contrary to what kids learn in government-run schools. In the world of academia, following peer pressure and blind appeal to authority are taught as guiding principles to survive and be successful. Outside of academia, those strategies could prove to be deadly. Hopefully in reading this, you have enough self-respect to get a bit angry. The conditions we find ourselves in are not natural not acceptable, and if allowed to run their course, will end in disaster. We're taught anger is bad, unacceptable, and even dangerous. Anger is disruptive, and we get angry when we need to be disruptive. Anger is a defense emotion, which is natural and healthy when we allow ourselves to express it properly. If someone is hurting you or someone you love, the responsible emotion is to feel anger. And Charles-Francois Bienvenu Muriel goes on in this article to describe different scenarios of anger and how to channel them in a proper manner, effective manner. So head on over to ungovernablemisfits.com under writings, misfit rants, and read the rest of the article, or simply wait. If you like to have things read to you, I will read you the entire article in a separate episode. Read us a story. <laughs> Read us a story about anger. (laughs) And that's it for this episode of Ungovernable Misfits PMM. We hope you enjoyed the demonstration of Max's freakish ability Mm -hmm. to guess elements of the periodic table based on their their frequency, their vibration. We hope that you aren't a uh, whiny little bitch who's going to get strapped to the top of a car and have diesel poured all over them and and burnt up to a crisp boot of the car. Oh, I thought it was on the top. No, 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 no. Because then you'd see the body. You want to put it in the boot. Yeah, I hope you're not at that either. And if you are, then there's hope for you yet because Bubba's going to give some advice and John's going to give some advice and I'll keep trying to give advice and we'll try and turn you from a whining little bitch into a real man. And uh, you can stop polluting our feed with bullshit and get on with what matters. Thank you, John. I've enjoyed this. We will reconvene a month from now. Thank you to everyone who's been boosting and supporting the show. As always, we really do appreciate it, and it is really helping get the word out there. The numbers are pretty crazy. A lot of new people, a lot of new listeners, and um, we appreciate it.